love for me. I think that uh, Brother Clay uh, to, uh, set this uh, set this up here. This program is set it up here because he didn't have all of these preachers. Every one of them preached my sermon, but that's all right. I'm coming on down the aisle. I'm coming on down the aisle, and uh, so uh, and I'm I'm really thankful to be here. I'm I'm glad that he always give me an invite, whether I can make it or not. He give me that invite, and I'm grateful for that. And I'm grateful that uh, I have uh, two cousins in here, that uh, two first cousins. Those young ladies you see sitting back there, Janice and uh, Geraldine, uh, those are my cousins. And uh, they, they live here, and they have made it a point to come out this morning to hear me. And I hope that I do, I do a job here that uh, they can approve of. And uh, if they don't, then they can discuss it with me why they don't believe what I said. So. And, uh, but anyway, to get on uh, to it down, uh, Brother uh, <clears throat> Williams assigned to me the uh, 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 topic of uh, the danger of a doctrine of drift. And he gave me the scriptures of uh, Hebrews 2, 1 through 4, which reads, Therefore, we ought to give the most earnest heed to the things that we've heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. For if the words spoken by angels were steadfast in every transgression, uh, and uh, disobedience received a, a just recompense of reward, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken of by the Lord and confirmed unto us by them that heard him? God also bearing a witness, both with uh, signs and wonders and uh, with divers miracles and gifts and the Holy Ghost according to their own will. And as I said, he gave me uh, uh, the dangers of... Uh, 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 doctrinal drift and I do believe that there's a definite danger there because that you can indeed lose eternal life uh, in uh, doctrinal drift uh, we have uh, written up on the divine pages of inspiration in Matthew 10 22 it says that uh, uh, you, you, you should be hated of all men for my name's sake you're going to be hated of all men for my name's sake but I tell you what if you endure until the end then you can have eternal life, you'll be saved. So you're going to be hated. And then Paul, he told Timothy there in 2 Timothy 4, he told him, you know, you're going to have those people uh, uh, that uh, uh, with itching ears, they're, not, they're going to turn away their ears from the truth, and they're going to turn them under favor, son. You're going to have that. So be prepared for that. And then we find in uh, uh, Revelation 2.10, he told us that, that if you be faithful unto death, that I will give you a crown of life. So we want to leave, if we're going to lose that crown of life, all that we have to do is have this doctrinal death. Paul said uh, in uh, Romans 1 and 16, he said, For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes it. He said, To the Jew first and also to the Greek. But therein, it says, The righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, and as is written, the just shall live by faith. So we, we know that we're living by faith. So we, we, we have to do those things that are written upon the divine pages of inspiration. Again, he says in uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, which I preached unto you, which also you received and were in that you stand, by which ye are also saved that you keep in memory the things that I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. And then he goes on to say, For I delivered unto you first of all that which I received. I received this. He saying, I re de delivered unto you that which I received, that uh, how Christ died according to the scriptures, and that he, uh, was, uh, he uh, uh, was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Now I'm giving you what I received. And I'm on, uh, you look at Galatians uh, uh, 11 and 1, and you'll find out uh, that uh, he'll tell you this gospel that he received that he didn't get it from no man. That it, this gospel that he received, he received it through revelation from Jesus Christ himself. 
So we need to, uh, we need to be, uh, stick with this gospel. And you know, again, he tells them there, you know, in, Revela in uh, uh, Galatians 6, 1 through 9. He said, I marvel that you're so soon removed. I marvel, I'm, I'm in awe that you're so soon removed from him that calls you into the grace of God unto another gospel. And let me tell you something, son, it's not another. But there are some that's going to trouble you, and they're going to pervert the word of God. And he said, you know, and uh, we have those right now that they're perverting, they're out there, and they're perverting the word of God. Amen. But then he didn't quit there. He said, but though we, the apostles, are an angel from heaven, if we should preach any other gospel unto you than that uh, which we preach, then, then let him be accursed. And it's so strong, so said I once, so say I now again. If any man should teach any other gospel unto you than that which we preach, let him be accursed. So my friend, you don't want to try to take any other gospel uh, to, the, uh, 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 the, to the church than what is there already. But you know, there are church members that, uh, as was stated yesterday, they want something new. They want to be like other people. But I'm telling you, uh, there's nothing that is new here. As a matter of fact, we're told that there's nothing new under the sun. So my friend, don't think that you're getting something new because you're seeing something different that you have not seen before. And we're told Ephesians uh, 4 and 14 uh, that we are not to be uh, children anymore. We're not to be tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine. But we don't hear that. We want to hear something else. We don't want to hear that by the slay of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. They're only waiting out there to deceive you. And you, you're just heading right straight into it when you fall into anything that they're teaching you that you cannot find written upon the divine pages of inspiration. You must find those things that, that you're obeying uh, upon God's book, in God's book. And we're not to believe everything that we hear, uh, and you know you better be careful of who it is that you hear it from. Because uh, uh, you're not going to always get the, the truth. And they always say, you know, a dog did a, did a, a bring a bone will carry a bone. So my friend, you, you better be careful who it is that you're hearing things from and, and what it is that you're hearing. And uh, we're told that we're not to believe every spirit. Uh, in Second Peter uh, uh, 2 and 1, it said that, we are, that, uh, uh, that there were false prophets among the people then and that there are going to be false teachers among us. But we don't believe that there are false teachers among us Oh, these are just new. These are the young folk. They know you old folk got them, do they? Old folk, you better stay where you are. Keep teaching these young folk. They don't have any sense anyway. They have an education, but they don't know how to use that education that they have. So my friend, you stay right on these. Uh, you stay on these young folk because that's the only way. And you better start putting some blinders on them where they can't see on either side. Because my friend, they're, they're leading you right down, uh, right down the trail to destruction. And we don't want to be led down the trail to destruction. Verse 1 of my text says that we, uh, we ought to give the most earnest heed to the things that we've heard. Uh, that uh, 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 we're not to let them uh, drift away uh, from them. Earnest uh, meaning uh, uh, serious, intense, no joking matter, serious about this thing. And now, he means to pay close attention to and pay careful notice. So we have to give the most earnest heed. So we must choose to, uh, 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 we must choose uh, that what we have to do. We have to choose uh, what the gospel has said for us to do. We must give close attention to the gospel because that is what we've heard is words of the gospel. That's what we heard. And uh, Paul said uh, that we are uh, saved by those words which you've heard if we keep in memory those things that we've heard. So we got to keep them in memory so that we can obey the, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, you know, they say, because if we didn't, then we believed in vain. If we don't keep them, then we believed in vain. So uh, we, 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 don't, uh, we don't give heed to the gospel. We, if we don't, we, then we're going to slowly drift away. Gonna, if you don't give heed to the things that you've heard, you're going to slowly let them slip away. The minister told you yesterday that it, it just slowly just goes away.
it slowly goes away. And that's what they say, they always say about the, uh, the gifts that you have. If you don't use those gifts that God has given you, then they will slowly drift away. You slowly go away. And you, you go back and uh, uh, that's where you get uh, into uh, the, where you get to saying, you know, well, you know, the, the church is dead. We don't have this and we don't have that. What you do have is you have the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And Paul says that all the power that he has to save is in it. He said it's all in the gospel. So we have the gospel. If I'm going to take and bring, and bring picnics and stuff to try to get you together and feed you every time that I'm trying to get you to church, I'm going to have to continue to feed you to keep you into the church. I do want to feed you, but I want to feed you the word of God. That's what I want to feed you. I want to feed you God's word. I want to give you some spiritual food, something that's going to let you have eternal life. As long as you don't let it slip away. My friend, if you let it slip away, then you're just letting Satan uh, uh, get better at his job and take you and take you in a way that you should not go. And uh, we're going to have to pay close attention to the gospel because that is what we heard his words of that gospel. Now, and uh, so it say in verse 2 that uh, it mentioned transgressions, which means doing what God forbids, which is the sin of of omission. It also mentions disobedience, which means falling, uh, or failing to do what God commands, to send the commission. So my friend, uh, some uh, 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 omit the fact that we are told in Ephesians 5.19 that we are to sing. It tells us, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns, and spiritual song, singing, singing with making melody in your heart uh, to the Lord. Now, and this is what you're to do. It doesn't tell you anything else to do but sing, you know. But he didn't tell me I couldn't. No, he didn't tell you that he couldn't. And people have used it so many times, and they tell you all the time. Your parents, when they send you to the store to get a, 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 a loaf of bread, and they give you a brand name, they don't have to tell you not to get all those other brands. Even you, if you were to send your sister or brother to the, to the store and tell them to get you a certain piece of candy, they don't have to tell you not to get the other. Because when you bring the wrong, I didn't tell you to get that, you, but you didn't say not. Yeah, you, you don't use that logic out there. Why should you try to use that logic when it comes to the word of God? You cannot use that. God omitted those things that uh, he did not want you to do. And he told you exactly, exactly what he wanted you to do. He didn't leave nothing out that he wanted you to do. He told you of the things it is that he wanted you to do. Uh, and so you would sing to him. Colossians 3, 6, 3, 16, it say, uh, we're not to entertain uh, uh, others by uh, having a singing group or something up here or uh, not to let them entertain us. Right. See, right. We're, not to, we're not to entertain that. But oh, you know, it sounds so good. It sound, and you're going to sound so good in hell. <laughs> that's where it's going, that's exactly where it's going to take you, you know. But, and then they go around with, but he didn't tell you not to, but he says sing. Yeah. He didn't say, he didn't tell you to entertain the group out there. God and Jesus Christ, they're the ones that you're making this melody to. They are the recipients of this. Yes. Amen. The same as they had to send up the uh, uh, sacrifices in the Old Testament, the singing is one of the things that we send up as a sacrifice. Oh, amen. We're to uh, uh, give our souls as a living sacrifice unto God. Uh, the word the singing we're to sing to one another uh, in uh, psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in our hearts. And some, they'll disobey this. And they'll add to it and take away from God's word. Revelation 22, 18 and 19 tells us about that. Proverbs 30 and 6, say don't do it because if you do, you're just going to be made a liar. So, so don't do that. 1 Corinthians uh, uh, 5 and 6 they want to omit that and forget that it's in the Bible. Oh, it ain't going to hurt nothing. Paul says there's just a little bit of leaven. 
just a little leaven. Leaven is a whole lump. So if it's wrong, don't bring it in here. Don't bring it in here if it's wrong. We don't want you in here with any type of a false doctrine. If you're going to teach the doctrine, teach the doctrine that we are indeed to teach. And that's, uh, so uh, uh, Paul told them that, you know, they had this thing going there about this man that had his brother. Well, he said, it's not good. He said, you're sending in glory in, but it's not good. He said, so uh, uh, you need to know that you need to get rid of that. And personally, I believe that when group singing was allowed to come in the church, it was approved by whoever that it is approved by and uh, whoever it started by, I believe that many of these the diversions that we have in the church have come from that, Amen. have come just from the group singing. Uh, that uh, 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 the bass mics, women ushers, women around the Lord's table, and the like. And then you know uh, what they what they what they have the, the, the nerve to do is you know some of them stand up and say, "Well, I gave them. Who is I? Who is I? We got to do what God said to do. You can't give permission that God did not give." You don't have the right to do that. If God has not given you permission, how are you going to give somebody else permission? You can't do it. And if you let them do it, then you're letting them direct you and usher you right on into a spot that you don't want to go. So, my friend, you, you better be careful of those things that you, that you hear and that you see and that you do. Uh, so, uh, and then you know what they, what they like to do? What they like, they really like to do is, they like to say, well, I have autonomy. You are so right. You do have autonomy. But you have autonomy to set times and things for, to do what God has told you to do. You cannot change the dates where he told you to do, like on Sunday, when you're supposed to have the communion, you can't take it and make it on Saturday. You can't do that. But you can set the time that you're to meet to do these things. You can set that time, but you cannot, you cannot change anything that God has already set in order and told us that he wants us to do to keep the, to, that we got, might all be one. And then when we start deviating, then we're no longer the one because we're leaving the church of Christ. And say, yes, you have that autonomy, but you know what? When it comes to the gospel of Christ, you don't have no autonomy. Christ has the autonomy. He has told us what he wants us to do. That is what he wants. Nothing long of that, nothing short of that. Just do what I told you to do, how I told you to do it, then you will be pleasing and acceptable in my sight. You know, and uh, then, you know, and I think that those of you that have this stuff, if you have the name of Church of Christ over your door, you need to take it down. Amen. If you have it on anything around there to say that this is where the church of Christ meets and you're teaching all this false doctrine, you need to take it down. Give us a name back. You want to do something, go out there and get you another name. And start with. Don't be doing it in the name of Christ because it is not pleasing and it is not acceptable in his sight. My friend, and this is what you've got to do. Enough. You know what uh, uh, Paul told Timothy? Paul told him, say, son, to say, say, look, the things that you've heard of me, what you've heard of me among many witnesses, I want you to take the same thing, not what you believe, not what Brother John told you, but take the same thing. And then I want you to commit it to faithful men. Faithful men. Not a brother that's here uh, once a month. Not, 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 not one that's here uh, uh, maybe twice a year. But I want the faithful men, those that are here, those that are trying to see that the work of God progresses and continues on, give it to them. Because they're going to take that baton and they're going to run with it. But I, I want you, I'm telling you who to give it to. I want it to faithful men. And you know, but then, then they start breaking down to, well, that depends on what you're calling faithful. I'm calling faithful, faithful. 
those that are doing the things that God would have you to do. Doing what God has have told you to do. That's what I'm calling faithful. Those that are there when the preachers need you. Those that are there when the elders need you. That's who I'm talking about. Uh, 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 those that are going out visiting the sick and, and helping the poor. Uh, those men, these faithful men, the ones that are striving to make heaven their home. That's, this is who I want you to give that word to because they're going to take it and they're going to go on and they're going to teach others about it also. Amen. And he said, matter of fact, in Luke 6, 46, why do you want to call me Lord? Why call me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? If you're going to call me Lord, then I want you to do what I said for you to do. But that's what we don't want to do. We want to do our own thing. In verse 3, the question now is, how shall we expect if we neglect to do what Christ says to do? The short of it is you will not. You will not escape. The word spoken by angels, it was steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward. And what are you saying? I'm saying that they were punished for their sins just as we will be punished for ours. Now this word was spoken by angels. Paul said that the words that we believe, the gospel, that it was given by Christ. So if you think the angels and he put them down and you're going to not, uh, uh, you're going to be able to disobey Christ and get past, don't fool yourself. Don't deceive yourself because you'll never make it. Uh, and if they ever receive such a, uh, a disobedience and reward, uh, their sins were punished. The answer is that we will not escape if we neglect to do what God has told us to do. Uh, we won't accept that uh, punishment either. Paul says in Galatians 1, 11, he tells you about where he got the gospel from. And uh, we're going to have to be faithful unto God, doing those things that he would have us do if we expect to be saved, if we expect, expect to have eternal life. But you know, when we start letting these things slip, where did this come from already? When we start letting these things slip, then uh, 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 that's, it just eases right on away. You slowly, and that's the way Satan is. That's the way Satan is. He gets you that way. He, 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 uh, 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 he lets you just easily, he just gives you a little bit of nip at a time so that he can just lead you right ahead on into destruction. He just gives you a little bit of it, a little bit of taste of it. And then there you are falling for the whole God. So, my friends, you've got to be, you've got to be careful. And you've got to be uh, uh, of what you're doing and what you say. And the one reason for it is because that we've all going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ in 1 Corinthians 5 and 10. And you're not going to account for someone else. But God fix it where you're going to account for you. Amen. You're going to account for you for the things that you have done in your body. Not for what someone else has done. And you know, that's such a beautiful thing that he has made it. You can't, a mother can't do it for you, father can't do it for you, uh, aunt, uncle, nobody can do it for you. You got to do it for self. That's why you better make the decisions. When you learn and you know better, you better start doing better. Because if you don't, that's your soul. Like they say, if I die and my soul be lost, it's nobody's fault but mine. It's nobody's fault but mine. So my friend, we want to make, make sure that we're doing those things that God would have us to do because in Acts 17, 30 and 31, it lets us know that uh, there was a time that God winked at this ignorance, but he don't wink no more. He commanded all men everywhere to repent. All men everywhere, and all means all, not some. And the uh, reason for that is because that he has appointed a day in which he's going to uh, uh, have you judge, which you will judge uh, the world righteous by the man of whom he uh, is the day. And uh, he proves it by the raising him from the dead. So we know that uh, he is the one that uh, uh, God has uh, put there for us to obey 
and to do those things that he said. So what we're going to have to do, we're going to have to be sure that we don't uh, uh, overload our ships by uh, uh, putting on, taking on extra weight. And uh, anything that God has told you to do, that he has put in his book divine, you can't go wrong. But anything that Brother Judge tells you to do, you can definitely go wrong. Amen. And that's why people are, are, are so many times, you know, and people you will just refer to, well, I'm going to go to your church. I say, you go to my church, you got a problem. Amen. But now if you go to the church of where that I'm a member of and where I worship, the Church of Christ, that's different. But if you go to my church, you got a deep, deep problem. Amen. So, my friend, you don't want to go to Brother Evans' church. Because Brother Evans, he don't have a heaven or a hell to put you into. As a matter of fact, he don't even have a loaf of bread to give you. So my friend, you better, you better, you better go right ahead on and do what the Savior has told you to do. Amen. And so by doing, you, you cannot fail. You Amen. cannot fail. If you do what he tells you to do, there is no way for you to fail. But when you let these things gradually slip away, and when I say that, it, it, it comes into the church gradually it comes in and all of a sudden it's, it's there boom and now where did this come from when did we start doing this when you start letting a little bit of it in there that's when it got in there when you let that you, well, stop it when you see it getting there stop it this is not authorized this is not something that God has given us permission to do so leave it out there you know at Christ it, it, God the Father God the Son and God the Holy Spirit being all one meaning that together whatever it is that they do they do it for the same purpose so that they can all uh, uh, be doing the same thing just like uh, Jesus prayed for uh, his disciples in John 17 17 he said but I'm not praying for them only but for all of them that's going to believe on me through their the apostles word that they might be one father as we are one and thou in me and I in thee that they might be one in us that the world might believe that you have sent me. So my friend, this is what we gotta do. And we gotta stick together. And now uh, they believe, you know, well, we can uh, uh, have unity in diversity. No, you cannot. If you're gonna have unity, you're gonna have unity. If you're gonna have diversity, that's what you're gonna have. And all of these big shots that are, uh, are getting up here telling you, you know, well, you don't have to do this and you don't have to do that, the Bible, is uh, the Bible is right. It can't be wrong. Christ is the head of the church. And when he's put his orders in here, those are the orders that we follow. And even just, even for uh, uh, to take the military, when you're given an order, you carry that order out. You don't go and change that order to something you want it to be. And if that, if that order endangered your life, you might, because it might save your life. But you don't even change the military orders. So how are you going to change the supreme being? How are you going to change his order? You've been a wonderful audience, and, and, and I could talk forever. I, I could go on forever because there's so much that God has given us to say about us drifting away from, from uh, his word and, and going astray and contrary to the teachings of Christ. Thank you so very much. Uh, did you want me to give the invitation, brother? Okay, um, in the Church of Christ, and that's something else. The, 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 preachers, the preachers don't believe in giving invitation anymore. Uh, you, know what they just, you know what they'll do? They'll get up here and say whatever it is that they got to say, the message is yours. It's mine, what do I do with it? You give, what do I do with it? All right? So, what the, what the thing of it is, is... Uh, 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 you're, you're given the commission to go out and teach all nations. You'll make disciples of all men. And then he said to, that you're to hear the gospel, Romans 10, 17. That you're to hear it, then you, you are to believe that which you've heard, John 8, uh, uh, 24. And you, and you know what? It tells you that uh, if you don't, uh, if you don't uh, believe it, then he said, you know where he is. He said, you can't come. You must believe. You must believe that I am the Christ the Son of God. And then after believing it, then you're going to have to repent of your sins. 
You have to stop all of the little evil, nasty little things that you're doing, sneaky little things that you're doing. You're going to have to lay that aside and, and then come on in. Some of you might be my scratches. I need to lay them scratches aside. Forget that lottery. Put that money into the collection plate. Let it be used for something that is good. It, it might be just only just uh, 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 sneaking out and around. Like the brother before me said, drink from your own cistern. You might be trying to get somebody else's cistern to drink from. All right? Leave it be. All of that's gone. Because you know what? Once that you are baptized, you are a new creation. That was an operation that took place down in that water. Don't ask me when, where, and how. That was an operation that took place that when you arose from there, you came up a new creation. But then after, after uh, uh, repenting, then you're going to have to confess the sweetest name that has ever been touched on mortal tongue, that Jesus Christ is indeed the Son of God. And then, you know, if you don't do it here, you will do it one day. You will do it one day. And then after confession, then you're going to have to be going down into the watery grave of baptism. And then you, when you rise there from, uh, then you're going to be a, a new creation. Once that you come up, you're going to be a new creation. That old man, you done left down off in that water. You can walk, when, you, when you've obeyed the gospel, you can walk out of here and they can say something to you about what you did yesterday. Oh, no, that wasn't me. Uh, I'm a new man. I just became new. I just had a new birth. I just had a new birth. So, uh, and if you're here, uh, you have the opportunity to become a member of the Church of Christ by obeying the gospel, hearing the gospel, believing the gospel, repenting of your sin, confessing to Christ Jesus, and going down in the watery grave of baptism. If you're here, you have that opportunity while we together stand and sing the Savior's invitation. Have you been to Jesus for the Trusting in his grace, the Esau, are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? And are you washed oh, in the blood and in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? And are your garments Spotless are they white as snow. Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb?